little bit of an introduction to Mark Miller, uh, although he needs none. He has uh, been on our board of directors longer than anybody else except me, and uh, has been an incredible resource on the board of directors. He has reinvented himself multiple times, and his current <coughs> incarnation is as a career coach and a lot more. He has, he's been very smart about recreating himself as an expert in a number of different areas. One of the things we advise you to do when you're looking for a job is to see if you can create a reputation for yourself as an expert in your field. So when people hear about a job, you are the only person that comes to mind. And uh, he's done this in a number of different areas through blogging, through his website, through by writing a book, by making uh, presentations, uh, and a number of other things as well. So. Uh, he's a wonderful role model for those of you who want to do something similar, create that kind of a reputation. And today he's going to talk about uh, the social job search, how you use Twitter and uh, LinkedIn in conjunction to uh, manage your job search. So let's give it up for Mark Miller. The idea behind this presentation, actually, I'm, I'm presenting to the Hispanic MBAs next week. And I've been talking with Kathy about doing something on Twitter. And I've, I'm trying to rework the title for South by next year. Because one of the things I discovered in working on this presentation is we have gone through a tectonic shift. And by the way, handouts are going around the room. And I gave you some slides. I give you specifically some screenshots on things I want you to do when you leave. But one of the things I wanted, one of the things I discovered as I went through this is we've seen a tectonic shift in how job search is done. And I kind of want to set the stage. 1995. Who remembers 1995? I was working for IBM in an executive briefing center. I, we, things were starting to get a little testy at IBM. We had gone through the near bankruptcy in 1993. And if I had to go do a job search? So in 95, the reality was the internet was still in its infancy. So 20 years ago, you still looked in the newspaper for a job. You probably looked, if you were someone like me, you probably looked in the ACM or IEEE uh, communications. You looked, you found a job on paper. The next step. Yes, does anybody else need handouts? Okay. The next step is you probably filled out a paper application. Okay? You remember those things? Okay. You probably then, after you fill out the paperwork, you stood by the phone waiting for someone to call you. Because many of us had email, but it was for probably proprietary inside the company email. This is just 20 years ago. Really, reality is not that long. At that point, you hope to go in and get an interview, and then you hope to get the job. The reality was they posted a job. The people who were interested came in and applied. And then you competed for the job. OK, let's set forward 10 years. 2005. <coughs> By the way, 2005, I had quit my job. <coughs> I, had, uh, I left IBM in 2000, went to work for a successful startup. After I nearly killed myself on a bicycle in 2002, I hit a car head on at 50 miles an hour. And I lived. I had broke a lot of bones, but I had no internal injuries and no brain injuries I'm willing to admit to. <laughs> the following year, I went off to teach high school math. And in 2005, I was teaching high school math. I was at Aitken's High School. OK? So the way you found a job, Monster. Okay, Monster was created in 1999. Oh, by the way, 2005 is when Indeed was founded. 
So the reality was, and I got involved in 2006 with Launchpad, reality was you found a job online. In other words, it's just simply taking everything out of the newspaper, off paper, and made it electronic. At that point, you probably filled out an online application. Really, the reality is we automated the hiring process, but we really didn't change anything. This was very similar back in the 1980s. Um, I was working at IBM, and I was, I was pulling uh, engineers off drafting boards and putting them on these large CAD CAM displays. And we were teaching them how to essentially automate drafting. We didn't change design at all. We just simply automated. Now, by 1990, we were pulling those engineers off and putting them in 3D, uh, into 3D design. By the way, most of my guys who've been there for 20 plus years couldn't do it. They were taught to think in front, side, and top view. If you suddenly say, I want you to think in 3D, they could not do it. What we were at that point was we were changing the thought process. Everything under there, up to that point, all we were doing was automating how they did graphics. Similar to what we're doing here. So at this point, once you applied, what did you do? Maybe not sat by the phone, you sat by your, your, your email, right? You waited to get, at this point, by 2005, everyone had internet-based email. And you sat and waited to get to say, can I have that interview? Or can, they will call you. Again, the people they interviewed were only those who applied. Okay, let's step forward to 2015. What has changed between 20, 2005 and 2015? Massive amounts of stuff. Like what? Social media. LinkedIn. Correct. LinkedIn. We have generated more data in the last two years than we generated in the last hundred. We have personally given up more information about ourselves in so many different ways. So what happens today? You know, hiring manager says, you know what? I want to hire a project manager. So what's the first thing that hiring manager is going to do? No, actually before that. Before they get a recruiter. Actually, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to go talk to their team members and say, do you know any good project managers? They're going to ask internally, do you know anybody? You see Paul here shaking, right? They know that their best hires come from referrals from inside the company. OK? So the, so the first thing that goes, OK, who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? Who do you know? The next thing they'll go is, then they'll probably go to a recruiter. And the first thing he goes, he's going to tell the recruiter is, find me the best project manager. Notice I said, find me. Now, she, in this scenario, she's going to ask, do you want me to post it online? What do you think his response is? No. OK. Remember, when we, all we were doing was automating the hiring process, the only people you got were people who were actively looking. When you don't, what is she going to do? She's going to start scouring the internet. She's going to do what we call talent sourcing. Now, Kathy, what do you quote in, in your orientation? How many percent of jobs get filled through filling up job applications? Oh, yeah, uh, through, through online boards. Uh, 10 to 12 percent. 10 to 12 percent. And one of the things we always tell people is, Spend about 10, 10 to 12% of your time 
on job growth. Now, the reality is, first thing the recruiter's gonna do is doing lots of Boolean searches on Google and LinkedIn. Who knows what a Boolean search is? Okay, it's ands and ors. They're looking for co combinations of keywords. And what they're searching on is your LinkedIn profile and anything else you do have put online, which could very well be resumes and resume databases. It could be on your own personal website. And I'll be, and I'll be by the way, I'm partnering with a company called Branded.me. Uh, it does a really nice job of creating personal brand, branded websites from your LinkedIn profile. And by the way, you can do it for free. Yeah. Now, they have a they have a professional version, which is actually very reasonably priced. Um, that if you do it yourself, go get your own domain. So I'm going to go get Mark Miller, Mark Miller name as my own domain. So the next thing they might do is they might look at Facebook, particularly when they're going to hire. I guarantee you they're going to look at your Facebook page. Now, out of curiosity, who here is on LinkedIn? Who is it? Good. Who has used LinkedIn advanced search? Who has it? Okay, we're going to spend some time teaching you because that's probably the most valuable thing you have. Okay, who's on Twitter? Okay, at the end of this, session, you're all going to get a goddamn Twitter ID. <laughs> okay? It sounds so silly, and what I'm going to show you is you want a recruiter to talk to you, and I'm going to do that today, and I got a couple of guys who will respond to me. I had a, I had a session, uh, National Speaker Association um, mastermind group that got together, and, it, and, and the, the announcement was he was at Patty DiNucci's house. I'm sorry, I don't know where Patty DiNucci lives. But that's what it says on the announcement. Because everybody who quote, is in the know knew where Patty lived. So what did I do? I tweeted my buddy Tom Singer to say, okay, where the hell did Patty DiNucci live? And he tweeted me back with the address. And I got that within 10 minutes. So the point here is, if you want people to talk to you, you're going to use Twitter. Now, how many of you have a smartphone? Okay, who doesn't have a smartphone? Small number, go get a smartphone. <laughs> if you can't afford it, I understand. If you can afford it, go get one. Because what we're going to find is, uh, we're going to hear my phone go off tweet and beep the number of times during the presentation. Uh, this is, I'm sorry, this, this is part of the 21st century. Uh, I have Twitter, I have Twitter announcements, Facebook announcements, and LinkedIn announcements go off on my phone. And yes, I pay attention to them. Oh, well, Facebook are all personal, so. Like, my buddy, my buddy uh, Steve Coyle has been building a, uh, uh, he's, he's developing a route for off the, the American Cycling Association, or v Venture Cycling Association, uh, a three-day bike tour around Central Texas. And he's been tweeting, he's been Facebook posting where he's doing it. And the last thing is Twitter. Yes, a lot of companies post their jobs. The first place they will announce is on Twitter. Two, if you, I want to get a recruiter to talk to me, I'll tweet to them. I have a client up in Chicago who's trying to re-enter the media market. He's writing LinkedIn publisher posts. And then what's he doing? He's tweeting out with the, the particular uh, Twitter handle of the person he wants to read the post, i.e., for example, a VP from HBO. And when that shows up for them, they have to go read it. And how does he know? Because they retweet it. Or they, they favorite it. 
the point here is, if you want to get someone's attention, Twitter, there's no better than very strategically using Twitter. Now, I have to admit, it took me a long time to get it. By the way, I'm 59. I'm a bit slow when it comes to this thing. Yes, I'll remember. Or as I say, I represent that for Mark. Okay, so the next thing they're going to do, the recruiters are going to do what we call, again, talent sourcing. There are tons of databases out there. Number one, places like Monster, Career Builder, Dice, Dice if you're a technical person, right? There are all these places where you can post your resume. And are they searching them? The answer is yes. Okay? The second place, places like Indeed, and, and Indeed like sites. So is it worthwhile you putting your resume out there? Even if you're not looking for a job? The answer is yes. This is called being a good passive candidate. You want to be found. The last piece is companies' ATSs. Who knows what an ATS is? Applicant tracking system. So you've probably been on sites like Jobvite. Uh, there, are, there are any number of other ones like it. And a lot of companies post jobs. Are those jobs real? No. What, is, what they're doing is collecting resumes. Not necessarily for a current job, but for future jobs. During the Great Recession, companies collected more resumes because more people were out of work. You're throwing your phone around. So what happened was they collected a ton of resumes. By the way, they still have them. That's why it's very critical when you apply for a job, you are careful what you're applying for and the resume you put in. Most of the time, they only keep the last resume you submitted. Kathy, is that kind of what you've heard? OK. Um, so this is very key. If you see, when you go to a website and you see three jobs you're qualified for, how many are you going to apply for? No. You're going to apply for one of them. You're going to apply for the one you're most qualified for. And then you're going to wait for them to tell you actually you're a better fit for another job but you're going to submit one. During the Great Recession, I worked for a life-size communication. I had any number of folks who, unfortunately, would come to Launchpad and then would come in and submit. They would uh, apply to three jobs, and then they come to me. And there are two problems. Number one, they applied to three jobs, and the hiring manager says they don't know what they want, and kicked them out. Second problem was they came to me after they applied. If you hand in your resume before you apply, and if I had submitted that resume in first, I am eligible for a referral bonus that was worth $2,500 a pop. You want to get someone motivated to help you? You want to go, you want to talk to your contact first and wait until they tell you to apply. Be cool with this. Because, by the way, again, applying online, most of the time, unless you already have a referral, is a waste of time. The world has changed. They are out looking for people, and they don't care whether you're looking for a job. It is no longer is it the fact that they're going to wait for people to apply. They're going to find the most qualified applicant. So two things I want you to think about. 80% of all jobs are filled through referrals. 
If that's the case, go get a damn referral before you ever start looking at a, a job. The second is 80% of all positions are never posted. So if your job search consists of just looking online, you are losing out on 80% of the jobs. Now, this, this last this was verified by Gary O'Neill, who was here about a month or two ago. Gary is a very, very well-respected uh, recruiter here in town. I expect I'm having coffee with him in a couple of weeks. And uh, you know, Gary was the one who said, you know, uh, waiting is not a job search strategy. You know, you need to get out in front. You need to get ahead of the hiring game. So, by the way, these statistics come from a, a Jerry Christman, who has spoke several times at the Career Thought Leaders Conference. If a job gets posted, there are 180 applicants. You are one of 180. Oh, by the way, there will be four employee referrals. Okay? Four out of 180 will have employee referrals. Now, half the, half the candidates will be deemed as not qualified. They will interview five people on average. How many of those five people will be include the employee referral? Two, right? The two that are qualified. So, if you are have an employee referral and you are qualified, you will get an interview. And that's all you really can ask for. Right? That, once you have an interview, then you can go sell yourself. If you don't get the interview, so what I'm going to tell you is target the company, not the job. Figure out who you want to go work for. Who is capable of hiring me? And then network your way into those locations. By the way, you're going to, I highly recommend you do this for the rest of your life. You cannot wait. You know, as I, as I always claim, if you're working for a company and things are good, by the way, shit happens. Right? I've been, I, I can't tell you the number of times I've been through two successful startups. Okay, both times we got acquired. Stuff changed. And by the way, it never changes for the good. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a, actually a former employee went to work for another startup, and um, to say the least, they were sort of running out of money. Oh, things changed. Well, duh. When you're working for a small company, particularly in, in this town, it's a startup, it's not going to stay the same. It's either going to go up, it's going to go down, if it grows, the culture changes. If they run out of money, the culture changes. No, it doesn't stay the same. Yes, so the point here is you got to be prepared, always, to be prepared to move on. And I'm going to talk about that at the end. You should be prepared to update your social media strategy, your resume, your LinkedIn profile twice a year. And by the way, I tell people, I tell clients to put a calendar entry on July 4th and New Year's to remind themselves to do this. By the way, on July 4th and New Year's, you're off. Hopefully you're off. Okay? Okay, we're cool with it. So, the first thing I want you to do is LinkedIn Advanced Search. And there are four fields I want you to get used to using. First, keywords. Second, location. 
the last name field, and the title field. And this is in your handouts. So I'm going to jump over to LinkedIn here. And this is, this shows I'm getting old. I need glasses. And I'm going to click on advanced. See on the top, top of the screen? So the first thing I want you to get comfortable doing is I'm on location, and I'm going to add a location, and I'm going to type in Austin. If you want to look for another location, but well, what this is going to narrow it down to uh, people who are working for companies here, because what we're looking for is individuals. And they have to have Austin in their, um, in their profile. There was a location. So the next thing I can do is I can start looking at job titles. So what I want to do, let's say I'm a project manager. If I type in project manager, and I'm going to look for current, what I'm looking for is people who have project manager in their LinkedIn profile, in their title field. Now, what comes up here is, by the way, it's got first come up with my first degree connection, and here I got Brian Henry. Oh, he's working for the Air Force Reserves. Okay. Uh, Jennifer Clark, she's working for Extend My Step. What the hell is Extend My Step? Let's go look. That looks like her. Yep. But the next one on there is Artie Childer, a former job club member. Does it sort people in terms of Yes, they can affect to me. So here, RD who has been a job club member a while ago. I've known him for a long time. He works for Plum. Anybody heard of Plum? They are a, actually my neighbor works for Plum. He's a, he's a uh, mobile designer, mo mobile programmer. They're doing home automation. By the way, they have 15 employees on LinkedIn, so it gives you an idea of the size of the company. What I want to start doing is, is I want to go look. And so I'm going to go click here and say, see all. And one of the things I want to see is, I want to see where they are. And they've got 11 employees here in Austin. 11 of the 15. Now, by the way, I had a company pop up. We did a search for a client who was a uh, product product manager, and he wanted uh, software as a service. So we did a search, came up, found this one guy in his list, uh, working for a company I never heard of, 500 employees. So I came in here, and I said, well, how many of them are in Austin? 50. Ah, they have a satellite office here. Who would have known? Turns out they have an office. They're kind of holed up off 360. Um, oh, there are a lot of companies that are setting up satellite offices here. A lot. Or I had another client. He heard about this company out of San Francisco. We looked, 500 employees. They had four here in Austin. Oh! They let some of their folks run uh, work remotely. So if you look at, uh, there's a company here in town called Q, Q2E Banking. They do um, they do software for community banks and uh, not, and um, currently they got about a third of their staff is located all over the country. So by the way, 
don't, this one of the things that allows you to do is start looking at who can I go work for? And they don't necessarily have to be here. So we found a number of times where I found people and then, then we're going to start working the network at that point. If I know they're here and they have people, so I might look at the title. Let's go back to advanced. Let's say I have a certification. Oh, by the way, let me go back here. Uh, this is my neighbor. Okay. Mark actually, Mark, Mark's got, he's 32. He has a girlfriend now. It's good. Now, she has blue hair, but it is awesome. I've been kidding him. This is, he, he's actually eating somewhat good rather than going getting fast food all the time. Yes, he is a software developer and he is a geek. And he's a very good guy. He has a very good dog. He has a, he has a very large dog named Z. So, uh, one of the other ways I can do is rather than looking for, for project for your title, I can come in here in the last name field. What do people put after their last name in LinkedIn? Certifications, right? Letters, right? So let's look in the most common one. Let's look at PMP. Uh, okay, let, let's. How about SPHR? Not non-technical. So now we go look at, oh, who hires people with SCHR? Oh, by the way, Jody Patterson, she works for University Federal Credit Union. Uh, Jill, she's out of work right now. Uh, Lori Howell, she works for Austin HR, which by the way is where Gary O'Neill works. Caroline Valentine, good buddy of mine, she uh, owns Valentine HR. Again, start looking for who hires people with your certification. And again, we're not so much looking at the people, but we're looking at where do they work. Because what we want to find is, we want to find people that look, smell, look like you, and who can hire me. So things like, if you look at a company, and everybody is 25, and like me, if you're late 50s, early 60s, and everybody in the company is really young, what does that tell you? Probably no chance, it doesn't mean you don't pursue it, but the odds are, number one, they're probably looking really cheap. In this town, there are a lot, in particularly the technology segment, when they're looking to hire kids, they don't pay them squat. So if you're looking for $90,000, $100,000 a year, probably not the place. You can learn a lot by just looking at trying to find people who look like you. Now, how else might you find that? How about reaching out to people who you've worked in the past? Particularly people who have worked, you have worked in the past in 10 to 15 years ago. Go reach out and find out where these people are. In the book, Give and Take by Adam Grant, he refers to these as loose ties. Okay? What happens is these people, you kind of know, you remember them, there's name recognition. I, like I've got more people at IBM that I've worked with years ago. And you go, look, where are they working? Now the difference here is, from a networking perspective, they're not close to you. They run in different networks than you. People who you do not have close relationships with. People like Kathy and I, we've been bonded at the hip for five or six years. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I'll show you how to find former. So one of the things you can go back and say, let's go I find IBM. And I can go look at, I want people who are not there anymore, which is past, not current. I'll show you some more on that in a second. And then I go search. So one of the things I want you to do is, is go back at, go back in your Rolodex, your Rolodex. Uh, go back in your old emails. Go look for people you used to know. Yes, it means kind of digging around, digging around in the back corners of the brain, and try and remember who who did I work with. It's interesting. I've gotten connected with a number of folks here recently that I worked with at IBM. Uh, one of them's up in Boston working for Red Hat. Um, and, and again, I'm, I don't care that they're not here. They know people, but they know different people than you. You know, they, they've gone off, I went off in one direction, they went off in another direction. The one thing I always like to tell when I went off to teach high school math, my best networking connection was my chiropractor. So it's not Michelle Gerard and I have been together for 20 years. So I think 1993 I started going there, and I still every other weekend. Uh, she knows a lot of people. She knew the Georgetown superintendent. It didn't do me squat with the good, but. She knew, she knew a lot of people, and she also knew who I was, my values, what I was trying to do, why I was doing it, because she went through the bike axis with me. These are actually invaluable people. Okay. The next thing I'm going to have you do, go back to my PowerPoint. has used Twitter to search. John? So how did you how have you used Twitter to search?
In your case, <coughs> you want to use hashtag Austin? Because anyone who's posting, talking about a job in Austin, they'll put hashtag Austin. Probably jobs. And probably, and one of the things you want to do is you want to get in and play around searching for what the heck, what are they using? Remember, there are no rules. You have to understand, you got to sit there and play around and see how people are using. So if I go to Twitter, sure. Like I would, I, I would go search on your name, and you'll probably find it. Okay. So, by the way, I am at Career Pivot, but my name, Mark Miller, is on there. You'll also find I also have a, a Twitter handle, M R Miller Austin Eight. Sorry. Yeah, M R M R Miller Austin. Uh, yeah, I think it's right. Yeah, yeah, it. So if I look for Miller, I'll, if I do MR Miller, I'll find MR Miller. By the way, my middle initial is R. My mama gave me those initials of Mr. Miller. She gave me some, some initials to get this, so I get some respect. So I'm rebooting my computer. The next thing I want to show you is for each company that you're going to end up putting on your list, I want you to do two things. Firstly. Follow the company page on LinkedIn. The second thing is I want you to create a Twitter list for each company. And once my computer comes back up and it's booting up, is I want you to create a Twitter list for each company and I want you to put in that Twitter list Every recruiter you can find who works for that company, <laughs> two, any top executives, three, any hiring managers, and four, anybody who might be your, your peer. And when you create it, who's, who's used a Twitter list? Anybody? It is a very, very rarely used feature. What happens is, when you create a Twitter list with these particular, you put the, the handles of each one in, it will show you the tweets <laughs> for just that group. The idea is when you create a Twitter list per target company, it's very easy for you to be able to go in and look at it and say, oh, I can look at it once every couple of days, and I can easily go in and look at the, at the tweets for just that small number of individuals. It's a great way, and said, what you want to do is create one per um, company. Now, the other one I didn't mention is you want to be able to put the, um, uh, and let me bring this back up. Ah, you find them through LinkedIn, because what you'll find is as you find them, you're going to look them up on good questions. You, well, you find them on LinkedIn, and what do people put in their LinkedIn profile? They put their Twitter handle in. So you're going to look up, look them up on LinkedIn. Now, the one thing I forgot is you're also going to put the company Twitter ID in that list. So, let me scroll. It's still. Still thinking. So let me come here. Give an example of a company ID. Sure. I've got a, I've got a Twitter list set up for Spreadfast. Let me, let me show you that. So for example, I create up this a. a um, a Twitter list for Spreadfast. Anybody familiar with Spreadfast here in town? Right. This the Spread Spreadfast is a uh, they're a social media software company. Really, they're more of a consulting company. Uh, they're trying to become a product company. 
And okay, so let's do this. Technology is the best. Okay. No, no, I'm going to wait until. It's really hard to find. If you see my little pretty picture on the up in the top right hand corner, if I click on that, and it's going to take a second to come up. Come on, there. Lists. So you go to your pretty little picture. At least I have a pretty little picture, and you'll come up to lists. And what I've done, and, I'll, and I'm going to give you a uh, link to a set of video on how actually how to create these. And I have a bunch of lists. So my straight-fast list, notice has a little lock by it. Okay? That means it's private. Why do I create a pr private list? You don't want anybody to see because you're creating one for a target company. Otherwise, you can make them public and everyone can see it. No. They can only, when you, when you set it to be private, nobody sees it. So I come in here on this, my spread fast list and here I have, by the way, Matthew Lind, Lind, former Launchpad member. He is a uh, he. I forget what his title at. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tweet him. So I just tweeted him, and I'm waiting for my phone to beep. The idea here is, if he's like most of his age generation, he's going to get beeped. His phone's going to beep when, when, he, when he gets the tweet. Okay? So what I've done here is, I can go through and I can look at all the different tweets so here, for example, uh, Patrick Be Be Barrett, all these different people have, and I can actually get a pretty good feel for, number one, what they have retweeted. And by the way, one of the things you'll find about Matthew, he's a triathlete. Why would you care that he's a triathlete? Why would you care? For conversation, you want to know something about him. If you're going to go ask, go go ask Matt to say, you know, can you help me get a job at Fredfast? You know, what can you do? It'd be nice if you actually knew something about him. So a lot of what he tweets is um, has to do with his and his triathlon stuff, and he does a lot of it. By the way, I'm a former marathoner. I I. I 
Oops. I just got vibrated. Nope. And the reality is I can't run anymore after my bike accident. Um, or as I say, I, I, I used to have people who referred to me as a two-beer runner, two-beer marathoner. In other words, they, they had two beers before I got in. <laughs> my fastest marathon was three and a half hours. So the idea here is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at the members of this Twitter group, and I put four of them in here. Uh, Matt, who's a director. Uh, Keith Zolder, I believe his, he's the CTO. Uh, Dylan is a recruiter. And then finally, the spread fast uh, Twitter handle. It gives you a single place where you can go. And I said, I, what I do is create one per. And hold on a second. Ah, you're, you're not tweeting. You're paying attention to what the things are being tweeted. Oh, Matthew just tweeted me back. He says, good morning. Coming to you live from the Sprint Fast office where it's, yeah, hat tweet. So I can also see that in my, uh, uh, in my notifications. There we are. OK. You want to get an attention from a recruiter? Tweet them. You want so one of the things I'm going to talk about is when you get a hold of somebody, get used to using Twitter. I can I can get people to talk to me, and all I'm trying to do is poke them. Okay, hold. Well, let me let hold on to that thought because I'm about to give that to you. Okay, so now that we're up, this thing is running again. Okay, so you built your target list of companies. I want you to build a Twitter list for each company and select the people you want it. Yes. No, I don't think so. I, I have not heard of them. Lists are so rarely used. Right now, I am copying Twitter uh, people who are following career shirt with my buddy Hannah Morgan, who's a career coach up in uh, Rochester, New York, and nextavenue.org. Uh, Next Avenue is PBS's um, baby boomer group. And, and what I'm looking is I follow people who follow them and waiting for them to follow me back. And when they don't follow me back, I'm following. So you create a Twitter list, you create a LinkedIn company page. Then the next thing we're going to do is we want to start connecting and following recruiters. The reason why we want to do that is the world is this giant network now. Recruiters and HR professionals, they are hyper-connected. They typically connect to everybody in their company. Oh, by the way, in a year and a half, they change jobs. You'll find typically recruiters change jobs every few years. Now, having been in the learning development space, they have, they have a lot in common with people in learning development. They get hired when things are good, and they get let go when things stop. So it's a very, very transient community. What you want to do with those recruiters is connect with them and be nice to them. As Gary O'Neill talked about the other day, he talked about the fact that the average recruiter here in town has somewhere between 30 and 40 recs to fill. When you have 180 people applying, they don't have time to talk to everybody. But in general, recruiters are actually really nice people. They're people people. So treat them with respect. So in, in, but 
Recruiters are also their gatekeepers. So when you connect to a recruiter, and they're connected to everybody inside of the company, everybody in the company becomes a second degree connection. And what you want to be able to do is, number one, when they're doing searches, when you're a first degree connection to a recruiter, where do you come up in the search list? Higher. So you want to connect with as many of these people as possible. So what you want to do, and this is in your, in your handout, this is the string I use, I use, to search for recruiters. I say, and by the way, use OR in capital. So I say HR, or human resources, or recruiter, or talent. Now, you'll find there'll be other variations. I find that for most of the time gets me, except for the very, very small companies, it'll get me there. Then, what you want to do is send them a connection request. And here I say, I'm very interested in a marketing position, substitute what you're interested in, at XYZ Company. And if there is a particular open position, give them the rec number. Here's the big piece. Are you the recruiter who handles these kinds of positions? If not, will you direct me to the recruiter who does? Then, no, this is part of the connection request. Yep. So could we set up a time to talk about your organization? In the meantime, please accept this invitation to connect. By the way, if, if they have a, in their LinkedIn profile, if they have a company-based e email address, I almost guarantee you they will accept the connection and they will respond which is all you're really looking for. So I'll use the example, I had a doctor I was working on the East Coast, and he wanted to get into one of the, um, oh gosh, uh, electronic medical records company. There's one out of Kansas City. So we found somebody there who's, who's a recruiter. He sent the connection request. She responded. She sent him to the other, another recruiter who he then connected to, and she got him to talking to a doctor who was doing exactly what he was doing. Recruiters in general are really nice people. And if you treat them, and again, they get these requests all the time. Be specific about what you want. The next thing I want you to do, after they accept the request, is tweet them. Right? Thanks for accepting my LinkedIn request. I'd love to chat. Again, ask for what you want. And most of the time, what you want is just to talk to somebody. OK? This is sales. In sales, at, with every sales meeting, what you're always looking is to close. And by the way, it's not closing the deal. It's closing that meeting to get to the next step. Most of the time, your next step is actually getting the recruiter to talk to you. So think of what do you want next. And by the way, if you tweet them, it's going to pop up on their phone, right? And yes, they're going to they're respond. So let's use the example. Let's see if this works. Okay. If I go back to Twitter. Oh, here I had uh, Paula Brandis tweeted me. Nice to meet you at MC. So, um, so let's go.
Okay. Will's on our board. He's a recruiter. So I'm going to tweet him. So the key piece here is, I want you at this point, you've got your list, I want you to start looking at each target company, I want you to start reaching out to current employees. And you do the same way, you're going to search on the, on the title, you're going to search on people with the same certification, you're going to send connection requests just like you did to the recruiter. And the magic word is you're going to ask for advice. Now, you're also going to reach out to former employees. So I told you, you use the company name with past not current. Why do you reach out to former employees? You got it. They can give you the scoop. So I'll use the example. I had a client who was interviewing with a company. The name has something to do with sun and air movement. You can figure out what the name of the company is. And we reached out to five people. He said, why'd you leave? And every last one gave the same answer. Toxic work environment. In fact, I did, I did this talk for Product Camp a year ago, or similar. And, and I meant, did that same story, and the guy in the back room says, yeah, I work there. It sucks. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. And this is where you're looking for company name, past, not current. Okay. Now on your target list, you're going to start adding people to your Twitter list. Yes, you want to pay attention. Do these people use Twitter? What are they tweeting about? And the last thing is, I want you to ask for air. Advice, insights, and recommendations. By the way, when you ask for advice, no, you're not asking for an informational interview. Can you give me 15 minutes of your time on the phone to ask some advice? So Joe, if I asked you for advice, would you turn me down? No. Most people never turn you down. Okay? So the point here is you ask for the advice, you ask for the insights, and the key thing is you ask for the recommendation. What should I do next? Who can you introduce me to? And the key piece here is say thank you. As each person helps you along, and you are Dol Dolores. So Joe, if I introduce you to Dolores, when you're done talking to Dolores, you come back and tell me. Okay? If Dolores introduces you to Mitchell back here, when you're done, you tell Dolores and you tell me. If Joe introduces you to Ron, you then tell Mitchell, Dolores, and me. And this can be as simple as an email. Because most of the time when people help you, what do they get out of it? Good feeling. That's, most of the time, that's it. So come back and tell me. And what you'll find is, if they say, oh, you talked to Ron. Well, then you might, you might want to talk to somebody else. I, I, got, I got another person I want you to talk to. So now that you're hired, once you get the job, this is the key piece. In one month after you get the job, you create six-month goals. And you put them out six months out. You create a calendar entry. At six months, 
You review and update your goals, again, six months out. By the way, you update your LinkedIn profile and update your resume. What I want you to do is every six months reflect back on what you learned, what did you accomplish, and always update your LinkedIn profile and resume. Every six months. At 12 months, you start working your target list again. You update the target list. At 18 months, you start searching again. I've had any number of folks who come to me and say, well, that's not being loyal. <laughs> Screw loyalty. Yeah. Here, here. <laughs> right? They're not loyal to you. And with the understanding that typically a, a decent job search being this way is going to take about 18 months. So the idea is, number one, if something bad happens, you already have your network built up at places where you want to go work. Your resume and your LinkedIn profile is always up to date. And you are prepared that if someone said, Jennifer, are you interested in a job? You can say, yep, I'm willing to talk. Because talk is cheap. The whole idea here is you are always prepared to move. So, resources for you. Um, my website, my blog, yes, you can reach me. Please feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn. I'll con connect with you. Uh, my Facebook page, it's lonely. Be friends. Uh, I don't use my Facebook page all that much. There, if you, this is in your handouts. If you, if, you if you follow this link, there are, I think, four Twitter um, posts. One of them has videos on how to create Twitter lists and how to populate the Twitter list. So yes, you probably, Twitter is not exactly friendly when it comes to lists. So go watch those videos. They're just, they're just YouTube videos. So with that, question. Well, if, if she said if you can't connect with them because you have to know their email address, just go figure out what their email address is. And that usually you can look at, at companies. Like for example, uh, when I was at LifeSize, my email address was mmiller at lifesize.com. You can look at other email addresses. No, just no. say your friend that usually asks to be addressed. But if you say we've done business together, yeah. just say we've done business together. Because they don't, they don't yeah. say, hey, this girl says she's done business with me. When you say we've done business together, they say where, put in whatever company you work with. Yeah. And then it puts you back. You don't need to know their email. But yeah, so there, are, there are times where people on purposely put it. And then you go, fi go figure it out. What's the value of being a uh, a lion. Would I want to be a lion? The answer is I don't believe in that. In fact, I just did a post called uh, if, if, Are You a Promiscuous Connector? Um, I, I believe only, I only, I accept, what I do when, when a stranger sends me a connection request, what I do, there are two ways to handle it. There is an obscure little place where you can go and say, reply but don't connect, and say, you know, it's real hard to find. Um, and where you can say, oh, by the way, how did you find me? What I do is I look at their LinkedIn profile. If it's a real profile and it doesn't have a supermodel picture, and it's not from Nigeria, and it has a decent number of connections, I will accept the connection and immediately send them a message saying, I just accepted your connection. How did you find me?